Uh, why don't we try and be like a YouTube presenter? What? Just like we're like, oh my god, just like, this is amazing! Hey, hey guys, <laughs> welcome to ch chapter three of WT Authors: The Vault <laughs> with my business partner and friend Jonathan Shakespeare <laughs> <laughs> and our third collection, 1929. <laughs> Imagine, imagine if that's what we were like all the time. Yeah. We couldn't be more opposites from that. No, I liked it. That was an intro. It was good. I think we'd probably keep that. I think, all right. Yeah. I think <laughs> even though you look slightly embarrassed about it, I think we probably keep <laughs> Um Yeah. 1929. 30 years in already. Third chapter. Third chapter, yeah. Things get a bit more decorative. Not as warlike inspired. A little bit more fancy. Yeah, you could say fancy. Smaller as well. Smaller. Yeah, the quite beefy. The first two watches, um, whereas these were yeah considerably smaller. But I pr I think that was am I right in saying the trends in the twenties watches got smaller after the wave of pocket watches. It must have been. <laughs> it must have been. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, from that point, where they didn't necessarily have to be a pocket watch anymore, raised onto a strap, then they had reign to be whatever they wanted to be. Yeah. I do like the 1929. Even though it looks tiddy compared to the 1914, it's actually just a pretty normal size watch, and it's kind of like my almost my daily drive. The daily drive, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's still a statement, but it doesn't rely on it being big in order to do so, so. Yeah, yeah. I just realized that I thought the screen with your watches was on and people would be seeing those watches, but they're not, they're just seeing your face. No. Um, yeah, which probably isn't as exciting as seeing We'll get around to talking about the watches later. So later. Got to keep them hooked. You... <laughs> <laughs> I think you should keep your high energy up for the duration. All right, of... okay, okay, sorry. All right, all right. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to go straight into anyway. it. Anyway. <laughs> I have put some images together. Um, Brilliant. I think maybe we start with the old strap, strap Um I'm going to share some photos here on a folder of um, the 1929. This, honestly, this was so funny, the 1929. Because of my monotone voice, this is going to sound like it's not funny at all. But, oh, my God, it was so funny. <laughs> we, uh, Mark was busy making the new 1929 tool, and we thought we'd be, like, super clever by, instead of having two tools that, um, you know, punch the top and the bottom strap out, we thought we'd save time by having one tool that did everything at once. Um, and so you I can I mean, it sounds like a good idea on paper. It does so sound far, like it. it sounds like a good idea. I mean, you can just see from this photo here just how many parts were like this tool was made up of. Like even at the back there, you can see there's like is my cursor. Can you see my cursor on here or not? Yes. 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 The right so there, uh, even these bits here, which I'll elaborate on in a bit, because you're probably like, what the hell are they? <laughs> um they were all stamped up by like, 1929, like parts of the tools. Like all of these bits were like part of the tool. Um, we had like nylon bushes here to like lubricate uh, because on the previous models we were having to spray this PTFE spray in it, whereas these had like uh, almost self-lubricating uh, bushes. And then this this bit here at the back, this is the key to what Mark was planning in the background. And he didn't tell me about this. Um, I don't think he told me about it anyway. I'm pretty sure he saved it till the weekend I got to his and then explained what was going on. And I think I might be right in saying as well, that my lovely wife Sarah came along this weekend because he was meeting up with Mark's uh, girlfriend um, and they were going to go off for the weekend and we were going to kind of do this stuff. All incredibly straightforward, like we had a weekend to get it done, 
bish bash bosh done yeah so i arrived there i think on the friday night <laughs> and mark was just a little bit like he, he seemed like he had a lot on his plate um, <laughs> And then we kind of went to the workshop and he was telling me what was going on. We were having this like, you know, double tool and everything. Uh, and you can see here like the different channels, like all of this is beautifully machined out. This isn't kind of like welded knives that you would probably normally get on a, like a strap making tool. Um, like absolutely gorgeous, these things. Um, so I had, so I think, this, oh, this was actually the old tool. I don't know why I put that in there. Still, that's nice. Yeah, but so you can actually see compared to here. So this was the old one, which there was two of. This is now the new one. This is like the Mark II souped up edition. Uh, and it's almost, imagine it a little bit like uh, a transformer uh, that is basically just having bits like, transformers or I'm thinking of Power Rangers, where things just kept getting bolted onto it and bolted onto it to almost became this like mega, mega tool. <laughs> um, so this was the final iteration here where Mark decided he was going to, instead of us using the fly press, we were going to have it pneumatically pressed out. Uh, wow. the, idea, the idea being we could just put a little bit of leather in, shh, press a button, shh, and it would just stamp the leather out. So all this frame here, like all of these bits around it, like this all kind of was the, the frame for the, uh, the pneumatic kind of ram and it was all you know like uh, held in place with all these clamps and everything to make sure that it all worked um and then it came to the crunch and this was probably maybe on a saturday it came to the crunch where we bit the bullet hooked everything up to the airline um and pressed the button and it <laughs> <laughs> it kind of went like psh, and then it went back up and we looked at the leather and it had kind of made like a little, a little mark on the leather of where the hole should be. Um, but nowhere near enough power to like actually get through the leather. Cause you gotta remember the leather's like, I mean, something like the 905 is nearly five mil in places, but these were probably more around the four mil mark yeah. and it's just solid leather. So like to punch through that needs a hell of a lot of force. And so this thing just did not have the cajonis nor did the airline. I think, you know, ran at a certain PSI and it just wasn't enough. So it was kind of like, well, what the hell are we going to do now? Like, we've got to get all these bits of leather cut out by Sunday. Um, and yeah, we're lighting the ship, basically. <laughs> so, Mark, you have to move that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and having to like frantically like remake bits to like, uh, like these bosses here to then enable us to actually put the tool back in the fly press, but obviously it had all been machined up to have the, the new, you know, the, the pneumatic kind of ram run through it. So none of it was like matching. So it was yet, yet again, it was like, a, I don't know, two in the morning or something when we actually finished these. And Mark lives probably about a four hour drive from where we live. And I just remember Sarah coming around like near the end because she was like, we've got to go. Like, I haven't eaten all afternoon. Um, <laughs> Mark was just like frantically running around the workshop, just trying his best to like machine bits, like on a whim, just like, oh my God, I need to do that, I need to do that. And of course we ended up doing it because we always do, like I said last time. But this was basically the task he'd set himself out. So you can see like all of these bits were new because we needed all new thickness uh gauges to cut the thickness of the leather all the rules and everything like everything here was like brand new from the last tool um and it was just a, a feat of engineering really um and yeah we got it we got it sorted but man oh man like it was just another one of those moments where we were like why do we do this to ourselves <laughs> oh, yeah um but it was fun you know we had a good a good weekend of it really um probably a little bit more frantic than i'd have liked um, it's always the simpler job there. just oh, what, sorry it's always the simpler job there, just full of things that you don't think about at the time i know it's what you're actually getting down to apply and finish the work that you think oh my god all these oversights i know well i i think mark probably as well but i'm always a bit of an optimist like that like my wife would say that where 
if ever there's a job that needs doing, I'm like, oh, it'll probably only take five minutes. And then four weeks later, it's like we're still we're still doing it. Um, so that was the strap. Um, and then we have the screen prints that came with the uh, the 1929. We actually managed to get down and get some photos of the screen prints actually being made, which is quite exciting. Because when you actually see the what the the final uh, screen print obviously they're incredibly crisp they look beautiful but when you actually see the behind the scenes it's a real messy job um which i just thought these looked amazing actually seeing these on press which i thought was cool it's our first um gold screen print as well this was from get a grip right in birmingham get a grip in birmingham uh amazing uh hand screen printers and it's all sustainably sourced and lots of yeah. like, ethically well, minded principles exactly they're amazing like they super good job of turning these around um but you can kind of see them all here in fact actually that's the 1914 that's the 1929 sorry folks that's the 1914 i didn't realize i had that photo um and then it's just the finished the finished article and so obviously this was kind of down the art deco route Again, you can see where, how we've uh, taken the logo of the, the author logo, and you can kind of see it all in this pattern here with all the A's kind of almost like deconstructed and then reassembled in this Art Deco pattern. So that's basically made up entirely of our logo. Um, but you kind of never know it really from looking at it. And then this is the, your good self here when you came over and signed them all, signed and numbered them all. Look at him. Look how young you look there. I know, right? I was just, yeah. Lost it now. <laughs> lost, my, lost my youth. It's really gone downhill, hasn't it? It really has. Um, so, yeah, so that was the, the screen print, which was quite... Uh, it's always quite exciting, the screen prints. I know that we don't necessarily... The last couple, we haven't done them like that, but... I'm sure we'll go back at some point, but it's always cool getting the finished screen prints. They're always just so. We're kind of, we're kind of in the mood of exploring other items that could like match the watch at the moment, aren't we? Things like maps and bumper stickers for the cars. I know. So who knows what next? I think we might have already thought about this. I think we have decided this, but obviously we're not going to tell anyone yet. Um, it's pretty exciting if it comes off. What we're planning. Um, and so, so also as well, the, off the back of the 1929, we then started doing more shows. So we yeah. kind of did the one show at that point, which was the East London Design Show. Um, and we did, although this watch came out in the end of 2015, we always then consider the following year, like the kind of almost the touring year now, where we basically take it out and show it to everyone. And the so, thing is, we were... We were at the beginning, probably hell bent on online only, weren't we? In that we crowdfunded, and we were contacting um, and being featured in so many online magazines. But we kind of maybe lost sight at the beginning of just how important it is to get this product out in front of people, and basically took it upon ourselves to tour wherever we wanted to go. Um, shows that matched our philosophy and sell directly to customers and it just allowed people to pick them up and try them on without having to go to a specific store but we'd almost like come to them with our exhibition um so this was kind of the first year we concentrated on that really just booked up as many shows as we could and test the water and see if it worked and yeah obviously yeah well there's no way we'd have managed to speak to as many people through kind of advertising as we have done by traveling up and down the country. Yeah. And also like, you know, as you've, everyone's kind of seen from just these videos, there's quite a lot of thought goes into them. Not the videos, obviously the watches, <laughs> um, but it's hard to get that across from literally a, an image on social media or a, a photo in an advert. It, you know, it kind of always needs people to like hear, you know, I mean, I'm sure we've bored a lot of people like telling them the stories behind things, but yeah, we kind of need to tell them all about it. Cause it's so exciting, all this stuff. And it's like, well, you, you know, you're not, 
getting that with other stuff. Like we've shown you all this cool stuff that you get with this watch. Um, and we hope that everyone else appreciates and enjoys it as much as we do really. Um, but so one of those, one of our favorite shows, which unfortunately, I mean, obviously it was canceled this year, but um, uh, the last couple of years, it hasn't really run as it, as it did previously. Here's my glamorous wife. I'm sure she'll love to see this photo her eating something. I can't see anything on the screen. But this was a... Oh, you can't? No. Oh. Oh, hang on. Error. Error occurred, Sam. Uh, oh, man. I had it all sorted. Uh, okay, right. Going back in. Can you see now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she'll love to see this picture of her eating like a breakfast bar. But the show that we did was called Eroica Britannia, and it was this vintage bike festival in the middle of Bakewell, where everyone gets dressed up uh, because you can't really be there if you're riding a bike that's earlier than 1984, I think. Yeah. So we, me, Sarah, Sam, and Becca, his girlfriend, uh, all piled into this uh, this campsite. Um, it was absolutely chucking it down. It was like the worst rain they've ever had. Uh, and yeah, I think we, because we arrived a bit late and had to set up camp in a puddle. Oh my god! It was just a washout. Like all this um, sawdust on the floor here was basically because they had to fill almost the entire arena with sawdust because it was just so bad the weather. Um, and we were like, there's no way this is going to go ahead. Like, it's, yeah, tragic that we're even here because we're all dressed up. Like, uh, Becca and Sarah were having to, like, do their victory rolls in, like, the van um, in the morning because, obviously, there was nowhere really to do it other than the van. Um, but, yeah, this was, like, the we kind of moved away from the <laughs> – when we were selling picture frames that you saw beforehand. <laughs> uh, and we wanted to showcase them in this kind of – almost like museum way. Um, so Sam had done these beautiful plaques that went with them all. I mean, I'm sure you can probably explain this a little bit. Yeah, like behind every watch there's a story and we wanted to present these as almost museum, uh, museum pieces. And um, with every collection had the plaque to explain exactly what they're inspired by. And uh, they presented in these beautiful display boxes. But it's such a simple setup, wasn't it? Like it, we had everything there with us to basically uh, turn up, place these on the on the counter, and start selling. And that, and it was this those sort of shows that I really like um, being part of because you don't know who you're going to be selling next to. Um, all the people that you meet from so many different uh, uh, parts of the country different lots of different interests and yeah it's it's nice to be somewhere where lots of individuality especially how people dressed like we saw with yeah. and Sarah um people but really it, make, yeah it's perfect as well because of the ear of the watches that we were selling it was kind of right up everyone's street because everyone was yeah. dressed as if they were from the 20s or wartime yeah. um and I th I think it was only about the week before they'd said there was like a, the theme for the stand was something like flowers or something like that. And so we basically just took all these dried flowers uh, and just covered the entire like worktop in them. Um, yeah, we kind of yeah. didn't know what to expect when we turned up in terms of what we were going to have in the space, but I kind of think we made like a decent job of it really. Yeah, like you were saying, like it had every possibility of being a wash out but it actually turned out to be really enjoyable didn't it yeah it wasn't um a disappointment at all this show and it's sorely missed as well because uh, unfortunately we haven't run it for the last couple of years and it's it was a bit of a staple in our calendar yeah um, and the thing was as well like we could have can you still see my screen it's got these weird lines across i don't know where they've come from um but they, uh, yeah, we could have probably had like a big marquee if we'd wanted it, but it was actually really quite cool just being in this bigger marquee with everyone else and like seeing what everyone had got up to that year. Um, it, yeah. I don't know about you, like, from my experience, I think when people see like a big branded 
marquee on, on its own, um, there's a bit of hesitation from people coming up and having a chat with you. Whereas yeah. if you're all part of this same kind of like community of sellers, yeah, it just makes it so much more open. And again, we still speak to people that we like, you know, friends that have made there. And we still kind of check in and see how they're doing, customers and things. And yeah, it was a real, a really fun um, time. There's Sarah actually wearing a 1929 look, the blue one. And then this was basically just afterwards, like you can just see that sea of mud. Um, yeah. As well, he's together. So yeah, that was a that was a Royka. I don't have any photos of any of the other shows. So we've talked about how many we did, but I've literally got. <laughs> well, they we, can look at our website. Then. We really hammed that up there. <laughs> look, look, look at our episode. We've got every single show we've ever done catalogued and archived. I um, think we've done like yeah, we've done fifty plus exhibitions now, haven't we? I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, really. Mm. Then the this was kind of just a thing. The, the fold that I'm about to show you, and Sam hasn't seen this, I'm just going to put him on the spot here. It's basically just all the things that we did in that year. And so there's kind of just a little bit of, can you see this? Oh, yeah. So I went to Goodwood with the 1929, uh, which was the first time I've ever been to Goodwood, which was pretty exciting. Again, all, like everyone was dressed up, which was like awesome. This uh, was one of the original samples of the 1929 you can see here. It's probably the only one we've ever had that doesn't have anything printed on the back because it was a very early sample. Um, but Sam will get more into design of that in a minute. Uh, we got a beautiful macro lens for the camera and I basically just took photos of like anything I could close up. So this was the 1929, it's like one of my favorite photos that was on the cover of our brochure for absolutely ages. Um, Sam went to the beach. I don't know whether you realize that, Sam, but this was the year yeah, yeah. he yeah. took to the beach. He went got dressed up as a pirate and went yeah. um, took photos yeah. of the watches down on South El Salem Beach. Um, also, we got into Shortlist magazine again, uh, obviously off the back of the 1914. So we had this amazing feature on the 1929, which you can see down the bottom. But also we did this really cool project so this is probably the only other watch that's ever been made by WC author that no one can buy. Um, it's still it's still 14 and 29, isn't it? No, what, sorry? The unofficial yeah. release between 14 and 29. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And so it was basically uh, one of the kind of writers in shortlist. They were doing like a how-to series in their... Uh, magazine and almost seeing like whether just a normal man on the street could like just build anything whether it be a bike or whatever it might be but because uh, Johnny Pyle kind of knew that we'd done watches uh, who was the writer of shortlist he asked whether or not we could make him a watch and so he basically made this watch out of an old I think it was a World War One compass mm -hmm. sorry everyone if like you know this is kind of sacrilege that I've done this to a compass um but yeah, we made this watch, which is amazing. Like, I think it looks cool. Like, even like even though it's not uh, the A at the twelve o'clock, it's got the kind of triangle there um, to symbolise the A. But the the thing that kind of scared me at the time was when I read about the fact that these compasses would have like, I think it's like radium or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so I made sure I opened it outside with like the wind blowing away from me with like a mask on and everything. But yes, yeah, so that was uh, we got into shortlist. We got into Top Gear. Oh, yeah, uh, in company there, um, which I thought was pretty cool. The um, went to New York. We went um, out to New York to look around uh, potential stores that we could kind of get stocked in. Also, uh, look at a show that we wanted to do over there. So this is up the Rockefeller Center, the 1929 Blue. 1929 really got around. We got a whole new setup workshop. Yeah. which was really quite exciting having this awesome like dedicated area for doing all the kind of assembly and everything um we also did i think it was our first advertising campaign um just kind of see how it went so this was a photo of the 1929 in all of the swarf that basically came off the tool that we made for the strap 
Um, and yeah, that was yeah. So I'm just I just thought I'd take you down memory lane there, Sam. <laughs> it achieved a lot, didn't it? The twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. Got, got really got around. Um, so do you want me to go through some of the twenty? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think I probably banged on enough about random things that people may or may not be interested in. But yeah. <laughs> How's that working out? You dare? You done? Sam is just okay. That's right. Seamlessly over. Am I? Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Great. Right. I've got the twenty nine and the fourteen in front of me here. Let's adjust my camera a little bit, shall we? Get them all in. Perfect. Just for just for like comparative purposes. So if we get the black one here. So this was the item we were discussing last week. And um, this week's piece, the 29, is quite a lot smaller, as you can see, in terms of um, both uh, width and thickness as well. Um, so this was the last we release we did with the um, braised lugs still. So it still has the um, reference of um, shoulders that are raised directly into the case, just like the 1914 was, uh, before we kind of tread away from that look in later um, collections. But this one, we really wanted to um, emphasize uh, a cushion case aesthetic, something that was quite um, dominant in that era, um, and match it up with other references from the previous watches like we've um we've we've kind of brought the coin edge on the case out, out a lot more compared to the 14. Um, we've still got hints of the um ridge details on the sides that you can see there kind of coming through from the case um but we've also um because of the we had such a good reaction to color from the previous editions we wanted to um, bring that out a lot further in this collection as well. So this there's a there's a big two tone story um, with these ones. Um, this one we're holding is the first automatic that we produced. So we use Miota Citizen movements in our um, automatics, and um, we load that up with clear case backs with the number etched. Um, to um for, for people to, to to see how this watch is actually working compared to the the, the standard quartz cases we had previously um we ne nicknamed this the Get great gatsby didn't we, we did. um, for, for obvious purposes the black and gold's quite a um an aggressive look but um turned out to be and it still is one of the best sellers um we only build a hundred of these well it's uh, just funny because we we did that automatic basically just to test the water because we'd never done a mechanical before and we didn't yeah. know if it would be well received or not, but we thought it'd probably be a good time to start just because the automatic was invented in the twenties. I think I'm right in saying I've been telling people that a lot, so I hope it's right. <laughs> um, so we thought, well, if we're going to do it, we might as well do it now. Uh, and it off just off the back of that, we now probably do more, automatics than we do quartzes just because yes, of the yeah. watch yeah automatics are now our best sellers but not to not to say that our quartz watches aren't as good so we've got uh, three other um watches in the um 1929 collection um at the same specification as the 1905 and 1914 but with obviously a different um aesthetic so we had the white edition again really playful with color um lots of two-tone. We produce this watch on the tan strap. Um, we have a lot of um, uh, ladies buy this watch. Um, for, uh, maybe it's something to do with a slightly softer style, but um, this, this, it was this collection as well that suddenly opened us up to actually selling to women as well, because the watches have been so big in the past, they tend to have a, um, more of a um a draw to men no, no, we like not to say that women can't wear our watches we have 
plenty that do, but this one was the first that kind of had a bit more of appeal to um, um, to them because of the scale. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's nice to sort of see the matte of the of the case, the matte effect of the case work with the polished um, bezel so well. So the way it's catching up really well. as well, Sam. If you can show the black and the cream together, yeah, I just absolutely love the kind of you know this is the same watch, um, but just with the different colours. How different yeah. it just can look so different. So, like, I would say, yeah, the cream. It's not. It's not until we actually get the cream out the box and show people that they realise how nice it looks. Um, the visuals on uh, online don't quite get across just how nice this is in the flesh, um, and I don't think there's any way of actually capturing that. Um, yeah. But it kind of has that cream. Cream is a difficult colour to get right on screen. Yeah, yeah. Too yellow or too washed out. I think when people see it when they come onto our stand, everyone always makes a beeline for that cream. Nice yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nice. It's got quite a casual look to it, the cream, versus the more dressier black. So people can kind of chop and change their styles um, based on the similar, on the same, exactly the same design. I really like it on this brown strap. Well, it kind of keeps the kind of, you know, from the 1914 military feel, it kind of keeps that militarian kind of yeah. look. The... I guess, yeah, this still has the kind of thread from that collection still running through it. Mm. Which is nice. Yeah. And then the blue, which is probably my favourite colourway, really does work on that traditional two-tone. Um, yeah, that is good. That is one of my favourites. Blue dial, gold highlights and bezel. Matte silver case with gold show, uh, gold lugs, and this and uses the tan as well. The tan and as you can see from the folder that I showed previously, when I went to Goodwood in New York, I pretty much wore that watch exclusively for an entire year. Yeah, literally went everywhere with me. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, that is a nice watch, and that's the 29 collection. Nice, very good. I'm gonna have to swap my devices again. That's okay. I'll, um, I'm going to share another library with you. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Let me know if you can't. Can you see this? Nice. So, yeah, this was the 1929 that we did. Um, again, every year I just fill the workshop with more and more stuff, uh, more props, um, just because I'm kind of like a magpie with things like that. Um but all of this stuff was bought and photographed. You know, this cane with this, there was actually sterling silver, like end cap and everything. Like we wanted to make it look as much as it was from like the roaring 20s as possible. Um, uh, and also, I should have brought these out actually. I forgot about these. They're out the back. I found that like this reclamation yard, all these like bankers checks from like the late 20s. And I was like, oh, because well, the 1929 was the Wall Street crash, which is kind of where the, the story that comes with the the watch, the chapter, is kind of you know loosely around the Wall Street crash. Um, we thought it'd be like amazing to have you know these bankers' checks with almost this like vaults that the watch was kept in, um, and yeah, like all these little prop made this little envelope here. I've still got that envelope with all the stamps on and everything. Um, in fact, actually, the, the attention to detail and not wanting to like blow my own trumpet, but that address on there. I'm pretty sure that's something like the London Stock Exchange or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then apple juice there instead of whiskey. And then these were like the hero shots, which I just think look absolutely amazing. The gold and the black just kind of emerging out of the blackness. Um, yeah. I always love the black photos, the kind of those shots. Like every year I get excited to do those. Um, <laughs> And then I can kind of show you from another photo shoot, uh, which was basically, we, Sam came up for the weekend and we, uh, a bit like that, that kind of beach shot that we showed you before, we basically did a, a load of shots that were on the beach to just kind of signify Sam being down uh, in Essex near the coast. And then we did shots up in the kind of Shropshire countryside 
just to kind of showcase where the workshop and everything was. Um, and so I just wanted to show these. Can you see that, Sam? So the, the kind of amusing thing with this is, and whenever you see like a nice photo, and I'm, you know, like this, this is a nice photo, but whenever you see a nice photo that someone's put on Instagram and you think, oh my God, like why, why do my photos not look like that? Or, you know, whatever it might be. I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of these photos. So you can see just what goes into these photos and the kind of ri ridiculousness of like how it all comes about. Because this is the final shot and it looks great. But, and this was another one of the final shots, which again, like, it's one of my favorite photos because it just looks amazing um, in that kind of light, which is all natural light. But no one sees, like, <laughs> Sam, like basically photographing Sam, photographing me. So you can see that was the actual shot there that Sam took. And this is how it looked, the photograph. And this, honestly, when I say this, <laughs> is understatement, it was bollock freezing was this day and i was having to get dressed up and all this stuff sam was wearing my ski jacket which weirdly that was the last time i ever saw that jacket and i don't know whether you took it with you or whether i, I lost it. it no <laughs> i ain't got it i i no idea look how skinny those jeans are jeez no i can't get away, <laughs> I can't get away if jeans are as tight anymore no especially not those wellies <laughs> um yeah I don't know whether to tell that story or not. Probably not. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't feel my hands. Literally couldn't feel my fingers. I was absolutely freezing. Um, but this photo here, like this was a, such a good photo. Like absolutely captured everything we wanted it to capture. The kind of the uh, leaves on the ground and everything. The kind of out of focus uh, scarf with the kind of leather gloves and everything. But in reality, this was the photograph. This was... <laughs> <laughs> Sam sat on my shoulders and kind of on like a weird like shooting hide that I don't really know what it was. Yeah, but well, basically sat, sat on my shoulders taking this photo. Um, so that just goes to show like whenever you see a really nice photo on Instagram, just think about the comedy of what's actually behind the camera taking that photo. Because I'd say nine times out of 10, it's something ridiculous like this. I'm yeah. in space. I'm not loving life there. No. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was just some yeah a trip down memory lane, really. Yeah, I don't think I have any more photos. I think that's my. Well, all I, I think have. we've covered quite a lot with the twenty nine. I think it's been full of fun and information, <laughs> informative, just like we wanted this series to be. Yeah, I hope so. I hope people are watching these and kind of yeah, kind of understanding what goes on, what goes into this. I think it can be, you can almost put this kind of polished edge on everything in life now because of the internet and social media and people can kind of think, oh, look how like incredibly polished that is. And a lot of it, you know, is we try our best to do things as best as we can. But just as you can see from those kind of snapshots, there's certain things that you just can't get around that and you've just got to make do. Um, and we just kind of want to make, you know, people aware that it doesn't always run smoothly, but hopefully we get there in the end. Um, and yeah. What you see, you uh, you enjoy, really. Yeah. So, what are we doing next week? Where are we up to? Next week, we move on quite a big jump. Well, not in terms of years, because we're only going forward five years to the nineteen thirty four. Yeah. But quite a big jump in terms of watch design. We basically yeah. lose the um, kind of wire looks. Yeah. And we head into uncharted territory. Nice. Uh, and I think the biggest, almost the biggest like change to the watch that we've ever done before, and also the hardest. I won't give anything away now, but trying to take this watch that's had wire lugs and going forward was like a pretty difficult task that, yeah, took quite a lot of work. Yeah. But you know, hopefully you were all happy with the results. So yeah, we will. Uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Do you want to end it? You started it. I, that can't. You can't end on that. <laughs> Tune in next week, folks. Chapter <laughs> four. Yeah. Thirty-four. Till then. Bye bye. Be safe. Bye bye.